Hello, I'm Dr. Ron England, and we're all the way up to part five of the menu database example. And in part five, what we're going to do is we're going to make an AJAX call back to the server and bring back data from an AJAX call. As you probably know, AJAX is an asynchronous communication method. What it does is it'll make a call to the server, bring back data that's specific to that whatever it called, but it doesn't refresh the page, which is very, very handy. So, for, so you see AJAX all the time in lots of applications. The beauty of not forcing that server refresh is, is quite good. And then you can handle whatever comes back in your dynamic HTML and your HTML5 page. So let's first go um, back. We know that um, I want to quick do, uh, in fact, what I'll do here is a quick demonstration of what is going on. So we will go over here. I'm going to go ahead and run the program. And we're going to go over here where I've got Google running, and it should go ahead and do the build. It's working on it now. And here it goes, loading. And the URL we're going to have that we're going to load here is full details menus, full details one. The menus was where I built the custom screen for the full details, which is the screen that I built. And the slash one means it's going to bring back the one with menu ID of one. So once this completes, taking its time, well, while it's actually doing its work, we can actually walk over here and look at the code. So the, remember the thing that we were doing, we had a drop down list, we had a menu, and the menu had menu groups. And we created a drop down list that allowed you to select the menu groups for a menu. And I had this uh, method he here where it said when, it hit, when you have an on change event, for it to go ahead and call a JavaScript function, select menu group. So if you come over here to the actual full details here and you select one of these, you're going to get, okay, there is, what I did is I showed the index and the um, item ID and the text of what was selected. And then here it's going to do a, sec a second call. And this, it says here, the call was successful. This will work, but you must serialize your data to JSON to process this way. So in other words, I'm saying, okay, I'm just giving back some information that's coming from a call that's going to the server and bringing it back, but I'm not actually bringing back the JSON data because that's its own lecture in itself, how to do the serialization of your uh, models into JSON. So that's what actually occurs here. So this was the drop-down list. I'm going to go ahead and, um, in this case, I'm going to stop the code. You already saw what it does when it runs. And let's look, let's go back up here to what I did, what that code looks like. So when I changed an element in the, in the drop-down list, I call this select menu group, this function, it's a JavaScript function. And the old code is from the last lecture. Now, I could have done the AJAX call without using jQuery. However, the jQuery syntax just makes it so clean and so easy to do that that's what I'm going to do. So, um, so with the jQuery syntax, I use the dollar sign and the dot AJAX, which is the keyword to say, hey, we're going to do an AJAX call. Where is it going to send it? That's the first argument to the AJAX call. Now, this is in JSON notation. And JSON notation for calls is actually quite handy. In fact, many times I wish C Sharp forced you into the syntax because a lot of times you're like, well, what exactly, what are you sending to the function call? But that's kind of a different thing. So the URL, which is where you're sending the AJAX call, is to menu groups get menu group. And we're going to have to look at that, where that's going to, because that's going to be inside of a controller. What type of, how are you sending this back? Well, you're sending it back via a post. That's to be an HTTP post. The data is going to be sent back as JSON data. So the JSON data that I'm sending back is the, the JSON data would be ID and the value associated with ID would be value. So in other words, I'm setting a JSON with the name ID and the value value. But the value value is not the word value. It's the contents of the value. So over here where I actually found the variable value um, that you saw, that value is the value of the ID that was defined in the drop-down list. Okay. So the drop-down list had three things, the index of the item in the drop-down list, the value, which is the menu group ID in the database, and the display text, which is index value text. So I'm sending back over ID as the keyword, as the actual parameter, and value as the value. 
Now, two things can happen in your Ajax call. You can either have it successfully complete the call, or you can not successfully complete the call. In any other case, I'm putting in an alert here, say the call was successful or was unsuccessful, and showing you the data that was returned. So what do we need to look at to show how this whole thing works together? Well, if you notice, I sent the call to menu groups, get menu group. So let's look at menu groups, get menu group. So here's the function menu group, get uh, menu group, get menu group. Okay, it's going to return a JSON result. Okay, I'm going to return the data back as JSON, and it re receives an, a string, which is the ID. Now, the next thing I'm going to do, because my DB context can do this, is I'm going to return the menu group associated with that ID. Now, to do that, I actually have to convert the string to an integer ID. I don't have any real problem. I didn't put any error checking in here because you're not going to do this um, without knowing what it's, I mean, without knowing that it's passing a valid parameter. It's not an HTTP GET where I can throw anything into the URL. It's fixed. The only way you trigger this is by selecting that menu group and they've all got associated IDs. So I didn't put a lot of error checking in here. So it's going to go ahead and find. Then once it does that, okay, you're going to have it return. Now, one thing I could do here, and which I am going to do in the future here, is convert this returned menu group to JSON data and send that data back to the, um, the view, and then, which is basically the HTML page, and do stuff with it. Well, that's kind of beyond the scope of what I want to do here. All I want to do in this lecture is trigger an AJAX call and get the data back. So what I'm returning in this case is um, converted to JSON this string that says, hey, guess what? I'm not sending back the data. I'm sending back the string that says, serialize your data and return it, and you're good. So let's go back to the uh, what happens here. I pick beverages. Okay, Beverage is index 0, menu group ID 1. Beverages is the text, okay, and it says call was successful, this will work, but you must serialize your data to JSON to proceed this way. So what you have seen here is I have a function that this is a view. I create a drop-down list. I have a trigger for the on change event, which calls a JavaScript function. The JavaScript function is called and it throws up an alert to tell you what's going there, which you normally would not need to put, throw that alert in there. Then I have, I actually trigger an AJAX call using the jQuery syntax to the URL menu group slash get menu group of type post, sending it JSON data. The data, the JSON data that's being sent is the ID and value. And then I have a success and an error parameter. On success, I do an alert. And on the air, I do an alert, and both of them return the data that is actually in that call and get in the, the menu group slash get menu group is returned in the parameter data here. And now you can manipulate it. And the last thing I did is I actually um, did a final alert here, which doesn't do anything because there's no J. That was actually something I can delete. You don't need that anymore. So don't get confused by that. There you go. Um, hopefully that gets you to the next step. And I'm gonna the next step we're gonna look at is converting this data to actually usable data that we can now bring back into our view. Remember the view is just the view is really HTML. Once I have JSON data in a view, which is an HTML page, I can do a lot of stuff with it. And that's stuff that we've actually learned in other classes. So it's very easy to manipulate at that point. Thank you very much and good programming.